give the people what they want. What? Whoa, what was that? Hey, Josh. Hello. We've got a video to finish. Where is that guy? Good thing we have most of this one done. Rizzo the Rat has not had a prominent role with the Muppets since the 2015 ABC show that was made into that mockumentary style that was popular during the 20 teens. I actually really loved that show, but it was unfortunately cancelled after only one season. Rizzo had been a major figure with the Muppets for decades, so I wanted to know what happened. When I think about the Muppets of the 1990s, I automatically think of the team up between Gonzo and Rizzo. The character made his debut in the later years of The Muppet Show, often seen with many other rats, a fixture of the Muppets in general. Christopher Reeve, 15 seconds to curtain, Christopher. Oh, thanks a lot, Scooter. Hey, listen, can you tell me what these rats are doing in my dressing room? I think it's the Foxtrot. <laughs> Gee, most stars get groupies. I get rats. As a breakout character from the rats, he began getting more and more screen time, becoming one of the most beloved characters amongst the ensemble. His rise from a background character to being one of the most loved parts of an endearing cast of misfits, and then completely falling off the earth, parallels his creator, Steve Whitmire. The two are inseparable because of how similar their stories are, and literally because Steve had his hand inside of Rizzo since day one. I've personally always been fond of Rizzo the Rat. As a child that grew up in the 1990s, he's one that always stuck out to me. The team of Gonzo and Rizzo always felt really natural to me, much more so than the team of Gonzo and Pepe. And like many others, I hope and wonder if we'll ever see this character again, either with or without Steve Whitmire and his hand inside of him. Okay, right, somehow Josh got most of this video ready, but missed the intro. So here it goes, I guess. I am not Josh Taylor. I think this is Modern Mouse still. And today we're gonna to talk about the rise and followers of the rat and where Josh might be. Seriously, has anyone seen him? Tony! Yeah, there he is. Tony, Tony, yeah, this is, uh, it's Rizzo. The rat. Oh, never mind. We, we, I would like to order a pizza for delivery. Known for his New Jersey accent, streetwear, and sarcasm, Rizzo was a character that rose out of the Muppets as something completely different. While Kermit is honest and sincere, Rizzo's the exact opposite. Even Gonzo, the character that he's often paired with, was much more good-natured despite his weirdo tendencies. Whitmire taking this character and kind of making him a jerk actually fits Rizzo. Ratting somebody out is just something that you'd say, and it fits this small but loud character. Going back to the original Muppet show, you'd often see rats hanging out backstage. They'd bother Kermit, Piggy, or the guest star of the week, often looking for an autograph or to be part of the show. It always felt like they were the ones playing the role of the audience. And since the cameras actually never panned out to the audience, we'll never really know who was out there, but I'd like to think that the entire Muppet Theater was filled with rats, eating popcorn, taking photos, and generally disrupting the entire show. And especially heckling Fozzie on stage along with Statler and Waldorf. While The Muppet Show began without Whitmire in 1976, he had made a name for himself performing with his own creation, a puppet named Otis in the Atlanta area where he grew up. He would get hired for The Muppet Show in 1978 and would slowly take on roles for the show, which included performing with the rats and creating the character of Lips. In fact, that character was created because Henson wanted to give Whitmire more to do at The Muppet Show and wanted to include him in the band. I knew that Whitmire's role with the Henson Company was significant to Rizzo's life, so I made my way to the Jim Henson studio in Hollywood. Unfortunately, 
I was told I didn't have the right credentials and they wouldn't let me pass the front gate. Maybe they'd kidnapped Rizzo or something, or were holding him hostage? I couldn't tell. I thought I might just go exploring in a different direction, so I went to go meet an old friend of Rizzo named Barry. Testing? Testing? Is this thing testing? One, two, does this microphone work? Is it working? You don't have to, you don't have to yell. You don't have to look at the microphone or, or touch it. I'm just hitting it. So you don't have to hit the microphone. You, you don't know that? Does you, it work correctly? You just put it down and you just talk. You just talk? What, you got a PhD in, in microphoneology or something? Get out of here. So if you could just talk about Rizzo, that'd be great. Who, who's Rizzo? What are you talking about? Who's Rizzo? He's the, he's the rat. Rizzo the rat, you told me on the phone you were friends. Oh, 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 Rizzo, so sorry. When you called, I was doing something, I thought you said Lizzo. You know who Lizzo is, right? You know, the DNA test woman? She, she created 23andMe? That, that girl. Okay, so Rizzo and I came up in the industry together. You know, he and I would go to all like the same auditions, even that Muppet one. Turns out, the Muppets were looking for someone with a Jersey accent, and you know, not a guy who's a true professional like me. They just wanted somebody raw and real and who like, you know, lacked talent. So Rizzo wasn't talented. You know, he cried before every audition he went into. I actually saw him pee on the floor once. Have you ever seen a rat wet himself? It's embarrassing for everyone, including the cleaning people. Yeah, uh, did you guys work on anything together? T together? That hack couldn't keep up with me, so no, we never worked together. Closest we got was the Muppets, but despite my huge talent, they turned me down. They said I wasn't approachable. Approachable? What are you kidding? Look at me! I'm so approachable! Anyway, I dodged a bullet on that one, with the whole Disney buying them up thing. I'd rather pull out every hair on my body than work for a mouse. I'm not working for cheese. Get out of here. Uh, you said you, you were friends with a rat, though. Yeah, because rats have dignity. They aren't afraid to steal pizza right out of your hands. You know, mice are just looking for handouts. Pathetic. Uh, when's the last time that you saw Rizzo? Last time I saw Rizzo... You know, I think, I think it's been a little, it's been a long time. You know, once I left the industry and started doing my own thing, I didn't hear from him again. He became kind of like, I don't know, selfish? And he abandoned everyone from his past, like his best friend Barry? You know, a real rat's rat, you know? I kind of like that. It's a little respect. Much respect, Rizzo, wherever you are right now. Uh, it kind of seems like you, like you miss him. Are you getting emotional or anything? Are you kidding me? What did my agent say? No, 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 cut this camera, cut this- Rizzo's big chance to break away from the rest of the Rat Pack. Get it? Because they're rats. Anyways, Rizzo really developed into his own personality in 1984's Muppets Take Manhattan. With his New Jersey accent, his typical streetwear, his love for food, and his sarcastic sense of humor. Here he's seen as more of a leader of the rats with them running Pete's Diner, a setting that becomes crucial throughout the film. He gets to sing songs and crack jokes and gets yelled at by the owner, Pete. You slow, you don't take orders. You lazy rat, you. Lazy rat? Okay, have it your way. See if I care. I don't have to take this abuse. I quit. <laughs> quit. Rizzo's rise in getting more and more screen time came from the fact that Jim Henson really took a liking to Steve Whitmire and made him somewhat of his understudy. Even during the production of Muppets Take Manhattan, Whitmire would step in when Henson had to be away because he was working on something else, and he would start puppeteering Kermit and other Henson characters. Because in the 1980s, the Jim Henson production company grew. What had once been a production company, mainly creating Sesame Street and The Muppet Show, began multiple film productions at a time with several TV shows on air. Overwhelmed with the amount of work, Henson actually looked to merge Henson Productions with the Walt Disney Company so that he could focus more on the creative side rather than the business. And while negotiations started, and productions like theme park attractions or a special called The Muppets at Walt Disney World were in the works to make this merge feel natural, Jim Henson would pass away. Jim Henson's children, namely Jane and Brian, put a stop to the sale to the Walt Disney Company. And even though they didn't own the Muppets, 
they did still get to be involved in producing and distributing Muppets films. Jim's children would ask Whitmire to take over the characters that Henson had puppeteered and given a voice to. And as Frank Oz focused more on his own acting and directing career, it put Whitmire in a pseudo leadership role with the Muppets. Rizzo's presence would continue to grow from there with Whitmire in this bigger role. 1992's The Muppets Christmas Carol saw Rizzo and Gonzo narrating the entire story, with the two being inseparable. In this case, since Gonzo was starring as author Charles Dickens, he had to be slightly less, well, weird, which gave many of the biggest and best jokes in the film to Rizzo, who couldn't stop eating or constantly cracking jokes. Plying their trade. Hey, 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 light the lamp, not the rat, light the lamp, not Oops, the rat! My what apologies. Are you doing? Put uh, me out, put 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 me out. What? Ah! The same can be said for 1996's Muppet Treasure Island, where Gonzo and Rizzo are friends with Jim Hawkins. Despite Kermit playing the hero and Miss Piggy being the damsel in distress, Hawkins, Gonzo, and Rizzo consistently feel like the stars. With them, once again, getting many of the biggest laughs. So before the mouse put his icky little gloves all over the Muppets, just like touching them and feeling them all over the place, I tried out again. This time for Muppet Treasure Island, because I love Tim Curry. He's the best. So I read the part of Jim Hawkins, and that jerk in casting said he, quote, couldn't see me in the role. He could see even less after I punched him in the face. He got a black eye. You, you seem... A little too made out of felt for that role? I, I think that they were looking for a, a person, Barry, not oh. a puppet. Oh, is that what you think, Josh? I'm a little too made out of felt? I'm not human enough for the role? Is that what you're saying? That's like puppet racism, man. You understand that? We call that feltism. You human supremacist jerk. Can't believe this guy. Can you believe this guy? Oh my gosh. Anyway, second, they used to hire full-grown adult women to play Peter Pan. I mean, let a guy dream over here, Josh, huh? Anyway. I thought I could be the next host of the Muppets Tonight Show because Kermit wasn't going to host it. Yeah, so how'd that go? Not great. I'll tell you that. Not great, Josh. The director asked me to give a monologue in order to see if I could hold my own, so I put on my best suit. I look so good. The one I use on all my Tinder dates, the one that the ladies love. But it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. So I started telling jokes. Do you hear one of my jokes, Josh? I'm going to tell you one of my jokes. Ready? Here we go. This is going to be bad. No, it's going to be really good. Here we go. Who's the most popular guy at the nudist colony? I, I don't want to know. Very it's much. the I, guy I, with no, the... No. The mid-90s ABC show Muppets Tonight was seen as a true revitalization of the Muppets coming back to television. It had the opportunity to be a new generation's version of the Muppets show. Updated to have more of a Saturday Night Live approach rather than the old variety show style, different members of the Muppets cast were in roles both in front of and behind the camera. Like Barry alluded to, Kermit was no longer the host of the show. Instead, he became the quote-unquote producer of Muppets Tonight, leaving the role for host to a new Muppet. And yes, it wasn't Barry. Instead, it was Clifford. And Rizzo became a production assistant, being able to interact with that week's guest fairly often. And Rizzo still got to be in sketches, with a fan favorite being the spoof of MTV's Real World. To find out what happened... When Muppets stop being polite and start being real. The real world, Muppets. <laughs> but Muppets Tonight created Rizzo's biggest competition for screen time, Pepe the King Prawn. The only real new character from the show that became a part of the original gang. Rizzo would share the screen with him in the next Big Muppet film, Muppets from Space. At this point, Gonzo, Rizzo, and Pepe became a comedic trio, and despite the Muppets Tonight Show not seeing the success that many thought it had the potential to have, the show, along with the recent films, gave the Muppets momentum going into the 21st century, or so we thought. Still haven't been able to get a hold of Josh, but he mentioned he was interviewing someone last week, so let me just take a look at his calendar. And... There. Barry? He's interviewing a guy named Barry, so... Cool. Maybe Barry talked to Josh recently, so... Give him a call. 
Who? Oh. Hello? Buried under the bed speaking. Who are you? Wait. Are you a... A handsome devil? As a matter of fact, I am! You're a Muppet. I mean, technically I'm not a Muppet. That term is trademarked, and if I told anyone, I'd probably get sued by the Disney people. Again. Uh Okay, you, you know, you know what? Actually, um, this all makes a ton of sense. No one should be surprised that Josh hangs out with weird puppet people. Hey, that's Mr. Weird Puppet People to you. I have more talent and professionalism than any of those Muppets. The hell with them. It's Hollywood who doesn't appreciate the fine qualities of my charisma, my jokes, and being a handsome devil. Sure, buddy. Look, I'm just calm because I'm trying to find Josh. You seem to be the last person he talked to, and no one's heard from him since. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, one question. Who's Josh? He interviewed you for a video about Rizzo the Rat, if that rings a bell. Oh, oh yeah! That guy! He's an idiot. I'm sorry to break it to you. He's an idiot. Haven't seen him, though. Hey, speaking of, do you know Rizzo? You know the one. She sings all those songs, you know, she's feeling fussy walking, blah, 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 DNA test. Cause I don't so, give a- so, Sorry, no, Barry, um, you're, you're breaking up. No. Hello, are you there? So let's talk about the Muppets in the 21st century, because in 2004, Disney made the play once again to outright purchase the Muppets. Bob Iger, being the new head of Disney, wanted to buy up some other things, and the Muppets were his first, way before he bought out Pixar or Marvel or Lucasfilm. The collaboration Disney had with Henson in the 1990s had shown promise, so you'd have thought that the Muppets were in good hands. The problem is that Disney didn't really know what to do with them when they finally had them. There were the made-for-TV movies and the direct-to-DVD releases, like Muppets Wizard of Oz or Kermit's Swamp Years, which saw Rizzo in much smaller roles or not even being featured at all. And when YouTube launched and the internet became a place to stream video, Disney used the Muppets there, taking advantage of internet culture to try and create viral moments, or recreate viral moments. It's a strange play though, that Disney would buy these timeless characters for millions of dollars, only to feature them on YouTube for very little money, or at that time, no money at all. And I get that the Muppets format in a variety show kind of fits the 2000s internet culture and sketch comedy on YouTube because these characters deserved more attention and love on a larger platform, especially since the rest of Disney's purchased products got so much more love than the Muppets ever did. We did get this video of Rizzo doing his best David Dobrik impression years before Dobrik was even around though. Uh, okay, ready? <clears throat> hello, 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 and yo, yo, yo. <sighs> all right, all right, let's do this, huh? Uh, you're alive, man. Wow. Uh, where have you been? I was in the bathroom. Did, did, did you just put sunglasses over your sunglasses? Future's bright, man. Stats are rising. Gotta block out those rays, you know? Surf's up. Uh, okay. Um, whatever. We, we've got a deadline to hit, so we should start going before we get more phone calls. There's not going to be more phone calls. Don't worry about it. I handled it. You handled it. Calls are done. You ready to record? Um, okay. Yeah, sure. But I didn't really know what to do for this video. Uh, you're the Muppet expert. I just love the Jason Segel Muppets movie. Well, let me ask you this, Joe. Are you a man? Or are you a Muppet? Uh, <laughs> um, like a trick question. I'm, I'm a man. I think. Um, yeah, man. Or, are you a Muppet of a man? Huh, um, hmm. Or, 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 am I a manly Muppet? No. You didn't just, for a, a, a third... Joe, I don't think that you fully understand the Muppets. It wasn't really until 2011 when the Muppets got back into the mainstream with Jason Segel being a major fan of the characters and pitching Disney a new film. This new movie titled The Muppets, which was super confusing, brought back more of a classic cast. 
The main featured players were those from the original Muppet Show of the 1970s. Few exceptions included a brand new character named Walter, and that left other Muppet characters added in the 80s and 90s to become cameos. Pepe, Bean Bunny, and even Rizzo were basically left out. And the same can be said for the 2014's Muppets Most Wanted film. Rizzo, in one of his few lines in the film, actually makes a joke about barely being featured. Oh, huh, I'll say, maybe even at the expense of other long-standing beloved Muppets. <sighs> Come on, Robin. <sighs> Coming. Disney felt that the box office for Muppets Most Wanted was disappointing, considering how well the previous film had done and the goodwill that had come from it. That led Disney to become much more hesitant in greenlighting any new Muppet films. And while the Muppets have never really drawn major money at the box office, they've always done fairly well on the home media market. But in a day and age where most people are streaming their movies and not actually buying any physical copies of anything, well, without a Disney Plus, Disney wasn't really making any money off of this film. The 2010s home media market basically didn't exist. And listen, even if Disney Plus was around, the amount of people that are sharing passwords or going on to some kind of pirating website and downloading it that way, it would be impossible to navigate all of the data in order to see if a film was successful. So Muppets Most Wanted, Lopped hard. I know it gets a bad rap, but Muppets Most Wanted actually has some pretty good cameos. Tina Fey and Christoph Waltz are great in it. I don't know. I think it could have been better. Josh Groban? He's like the worst Josh. Opera? <laughs> that guy. Whoa, whoa, man. Whoa. Josh Groban doesn't mess around. If you thought getting low hand was bad, Getting Grobin is going to be way worse. But, like, back to the movie, I didn't love it because Constantine just wasn't a great villain. Constantine? He's, like, the best Muppet ever. Should have given him all those Josh Grobin songs. He had a few good lines. It was a fun trope to pull off, but I don't think he was that memorable. The evil twin trope is great. There's the Man in the Iron Mask movie or Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen. Wait, Mary-Kate and Ashley? I don't think one of them is evil. You sure about that? This like the Muppet or a man question? I'm I'm getting confused. You don't know? Now you know, Joe. Rest in peace. R.I.P. Notorious B.I.G. What? All right, back to Rizzo. The character, having become part of the background, finally broke out again with the new ABC TV show in 2015 called The Muppets. Okay, before I get to that, can I just say that as somebody who watches and talks about movies and TV shows a lot, can we come up with a better way to name different properties? Everything being named the Muppets is just super confusing. It's like how they have a movie named Willow, but then decades later they come out with a TV show also just named Willow, not Willow 2 or Willow with any subtitle, just Willow. Of course, then there's the Fast and Furious movies, which aren't even numbered correctly half the time, or sometimes they don't even have a number. The spinoff doesn't even have the Fast and Furious title to it at all. Basically, you have to do a bunch of homework just to figure out what movies chronologically you have to watch, or TV shows, or whatever. It's confusing and frustrating and very uncreative. I'll challenge anyone in the entertainment industry to start coming up with better titles or secondary titles or just numbering things correctly. Anyways, the ABC show coming off as a mockumentary follows the behind the scenes world of the Muppets as they create a new late night talk show for Miss Piggy. Here we reunite Gonzo, Pepe, and Rizzo as a trio. They make up the writer's room for the show, which makes complete sense. Of course they'd come together to write all the jokes for Miss Piggy because they're usually the ones that got all of the great jokes and gags throughout the Muppets history. If you didn't watch the show or didn't even know it existed when it aired, I don't blame you. The Muppets only lasted for one season. Its major issue came with Disney mixing up the show's creative team halfway through, trying to course correct what they thought didn't work. Oh, life is so fragile, ain't it? Hold me. 
The issue with the Muppets is that in all of their time with Disney, ever since the early 1990s, they started to gain a reputation for being safe and only for children. I wouldn't blame any one singular production or even the writing teams for some of these projects, but just the mere association with Disney itself. Plus the fact that a lot of people saw puppets and thought, well, that's clearly for children. I mean, they are, but they don't always have to be. I mean, you can't blame people though, considering their first exposure to puppets is likely Sesame Street, another Jim Henson production, and one that Kermit is associated with. Plus, the Sesame Street characters do pop up from time to time in the Muppets films. Their original concept of the 2015 show was to course correct that idea of the Muppets just being children's entertainment. They opted to split up Kermit and Miss Piggy, insert more adult humor, and try to portray the characters as having more mature issues. Hey, be nice, no dirty drawings. Oh, maybe I can make it into a saxophone. The creative mix-up tried reversing those decisions, and the failure of the show came down to basically an identity crisis. And that identity crisis basically carried over as well to the longtime performers of the Muppets, namely Steve Whitmire. As an elder statesman, a longtime voice for Kermit, and someone who was being groomed to be a creative producer for the Muppets, he challenged the writers and continued to offer suggestions for the show. Frustrations grew behind the scenes from all parties, and when the ABC show was canceled, Whitmire was let go from his place within the Muppet Studios. Disney's choice to let Steve go also wasn't just Disney. The Henson family had a hand in letting him go too. Allegations said that he was both bitter and depressed, making him difficult to work with. Now, I'm not gonna say who was right or wrong in this argument. I'm sure a ton of people in the comments will give their opinion on it instead of me, so blame them. But I will say that his abrupt ending with the Muppets also had other casualties, namely some of his characters. While Matt Vogel, the puppeteer and voice of Big Bird and many other Jim Henson characters, stepped in to take over the majority of Whitmire's roles, including Kermit, he didn't take over one of Whitmire's created characters, Rizzo the Rat. Since 2017, Rizzo has not had a speaking role and has rarely, if at all, been seen with the Muppets. Pepe has practically taken the place that Rizzo once held, and yes, there is a pizza restaurant at Walt Disney World named after Rizzo. And yes, the group of rats that he originated from still come out from time to time. So it is possible that we might see Rizzo again down the line, but it's also quite possible that we may not. So who knows? Maybe he'll get a new performer and a new voice, or maybe he won't. I guess we'll all have to wait and see what time tells us for our friend, the Riz. Did you just call him the Riz? It's a Gen Z slang term. It means charisma. You wouldn't understand. Uh, yeah. Actually, my, my day job is working with middle school students, and I have a teenager at home, so... Joe, I think you're great. I think it's about time that we take all that pop culture knowledge that's in your noggin and put it to use. Noggin. You say noggin now? It's a Victorian slang term. It means your head. I, I, I yeah, I, yeah, I, I know what it means. Just, something's off, man. Like, I know YouTube isn't stressing you out. Have you talked to them, or... Have you got a chance to talk to Lindsay Lohan recently? No. And for the first time in a long time, I'm feeling great. And I'm excited to make something topical and exciting. And I think something right up your alley. Okay, my spider senses are tingling. Are we doing comic book stuff? Because I'm totally in. But hey, really, though, where were you last week, man? <laughs>